yeah, just talk, talk about these sort of, you know, in terms of shorting. So stockholders get angry, take drastic action in the bull market, it doesn't do something that's the best extreme and it works terribly risky. Well, I find there's normally a chain, chain of events with um, shorting companies. People get very, very emotional, particularly private retail clients, about shorters. Shorters are the enemy. So when you hold a share and the share goes down and you're a, an average, I'm not blaming these people, but it's just human nature, the value of your share goes down, you're losing money, your wife's getting angry with you. Um, who's the first person you blame? You blame the short seller. It's a bear raid. It's negative people like Lucian Myers or whoever it may be, ruining a perfectly good British company, spreading false lies about them and um, these guys are scum. I, you see it all the time on the bulletin boards. I mean, saying I'm scum. <laughs> these guys are perfectly unsophisticated investors who don't really know the game. And the first line of attack is always the shorters. After that, if and when, and in my experience, hopefully more often than not, the shorters have got a point, the second line of attack is the management of the companies. They start forgetting about vilifying the shorters, and then they go to the management of the company and say, look, what's going on? And that, I think, is a good process, because if the company is being badly run, then it can force uh, um, the company to change tack and do what they should be doing. Um, normally, that's activist investors where they see value in a company, they're going long of a company they believe to be mismanaged, but obviously with potential. So you wouldn't normally short a company and then tell the management how to get it right, because that would suggest the shares would go up. But often, if you are short of a company, other people, because you believe the shares to be um, you know, going down or close, close to bankruptcy, it does concentrate the mind of the shareholders to go to the management and say, look, what the hell's going on? Okay, um, the company would have trouble raising money through secondary offerings. Conversely, an errant price drop could be the perfect time for the corporation to buy back its own stock for cheap. If they've got any money, that's correct. That's a, a, what a lot of companies who believe their share. I personally think it's, uh, I don't think it's a good idea buying back shares in the market to cancel them, which companies do. It doesn't seem to me often to have a, um, a beneficial effect, and, it, and, and often it's an act of desperation, but without wishing to generalise about that. Um, the sort of companies I target are not companies who have the cash resources to be able to buy their shares in the market. Um, some companies are desperate and use, ca use cash, which they should be using to keep themselves alive, to buy their shares in the market, but it's difficult to know when that's the case, and it's not something I really get into. I mean, a lot of companies, Next being a good example, um, successfully buy back their stock and they generate a huge amounts of cash. And, uh, you know, I think they, I'm not sure that they do it necessarily because they think their share price is low, but a lot of perfectly respectable companies like Next uh, buy back shares in the market. And um, good luck to them, but it's not something I really try and study. About press, customer suppliers pull existing business. Yes, and you know, no, no you know, I, again, it's all about truth. If the, uh, there's no I, short sellers on the whole, and I certainly, if I, I don't, th I've certainly never w willingly will say something I believe to be untrue about a company. I will say uh, if I think a company is running out of money or badly. Uh, run, I'll say, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'll be punished by the market for it. But, um, you know, if I s make a specific accusation against the company and its suppliers do stop dealing with it, then I'm doing the suppliers a favour. So, Have you been reprimanded? What do you mean by reprimand? But personally, have you, have you made, you know, because you're relatively well known, have you made statements that have got well, you in? No, I've never ever been, um, uh, uh, well, I've had legal action threatened um, against me, but I've never, I've never been uh, success. I've never actually been had legal action started. I've had legal, legal action threatened against me for making false statements. But as far as I'm aware, I never have made a false statement about a company, and nobody has ever carried through um, uh, a no, threat. I, just, I, just, I mean, I once described. I say the nearest thing I've had to being reprimanded is that I described, and I won't 
name, obviously, the company or the man, but I described a chief, chief executive of a company as greedy and unprincipled, and the article that I wrote this in was withdrawn. Um, and in fact, the company, although I believe the man is indeed greedy and unprincipled, in fact, the company has since uh, done extremely well, and I actually hold stock in the company now as, as a long, having been short before. Um, he's actually done a pretty good job of running the company. I won't say which one it is, but I do hold it. And the article on a website that where I had described him as greedy and unprincipled was removed, not by myself, but by the guy who ran the website. Interesting. So, Interesting. It just shows that you can be greedy and unprincipled and run a successful company, I which I, at the time, naively didn't understand. I would have thought they were two very, very useful Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, that, I came round to that way of thinking. <laughs>